Let's learn about this medicine from the turn of the century on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. William Burr Caldwell was born in 1839 in Missouri. He's got at least six siblings and his dad was a minister. He studied at Rush Medical College in Chicago and graduated in 1875. He and his wife moved to Monticello, Illinois to practice his profession. He was very successful in relieving constipation and other ailments of his patients with his remedy called Dr. Caldwell's Syrup Pepsin, an alcoholic sugar solution containing senna, some pepsin, and it was flavored with oil of peppermint and aromatics. It's labeled as a laxative, and in 1892, he started manufacturing it for drugstores. So let's back up a minute. What's senna in pepsin? Senna is an herb. The leaves and the fruit of the plant are used to make medicine to treat constipation. Pepsin is an enzyme that aids in digestion. Some sources say it's the ingredient in early recipes for Pepsi, which gives the soda its name. And then other sources say, despite the two sounding alike, pepsin was never an ingredient in Pepsi. I linked the two sources so you can read it if you want and try to figure it out. Dr. Caldwell published articles in 1887 and 1889 about his research on pepsin and its aid in digestion. The Pepsin Syrup Company was formally organized in 1893. The company continued to grow, and by 1902, larger facilities were needed. In 1903, they purchased an old residence that sat alone on a city block. They remodeled it and extended it, and this served as his factory for many years. Residents began to refer to this area as Pepsin Hill. It looks like in the early 1900s through the 1910s, Caldwell published a booklet called Guide to Health Cookbook and he printed new editions for years. Now here's an ad. I'm not sure what year this newspaper is, but just so you get a feel for what the ads say, it says it's a mild tasting combination of simple laxative herbs with pepsin, brings relief without griping or other discomfort. A trial bottle can be obtained by writing in. Dr. Caldwell continued his practice in Monticello for 47 years. His remedy became the largest selling family laxative in the world. In 1906, he would have been about 67, he sold his interest in the medicine to the Pepsin Syrup Company, which was headed by a guy named Alan Moore. It seems that Alan Moore had a team of employees working together in this venture, and they expanded the building again in 1914, 1919, and 1924. In Caldwell's obituary, it mentions that in 1916, he was injured and required one of his limbs to be amputated. It didn't say which one, but he fully recovered. Then he had a gradual decline in health for a few months before he died in 1922 at age 83. Three years after he died in 1925, the company was sold to Household Products Company, which is a division of Sterling Drugs Products, for about $5 million. Pepsin syrup was made under the Pepsin Syrup Company name until 1934, when it was renamed Dr. W.B. Caldwell Incorporated. Fast forward 50 years, and in 1984, Sterling Drugs announced that they had signed a contract selling all trademark rights and inventories to Mentholatum Company of New York who then closed the Caldwell plant in October 1985. A newspaper article from 2005 says, the building was almost 121,000 square feet. It was four stories tall on the Eastern production side, and it once housed a gymnasium, a full service employee cafeteria, and an ornate entryway with marble walls and a staircase. But after it closed, it rapidly deteriorated. The roof started to fall apart and the owner didn't do anything to preserve it. So in 2005, the building was leveled. Someone who worked in the plant in the 1970s says there were about 100 employees at that time. She says it was a lot of fun. 
There were a lot of good people up there. It was a nice family atmosphere. To see what it's become is very disheartening. I wish it could have been saved earlier. I found another article from earlier in 2020 that the city plans to rebuild on that property. At the time, I don't think it had been quite decided on what they were building. Large quantities of Caldwell's bottles were produced by Illinois Glass Company. See the eye and the diamond here on the base? According to this website, this mark was used from 1915 to 1929. Since mine says 23 under the mark, I'm going to guess that maybe that might be the date. Apparently, bottles still had Dr. Caldwell's name embossed on them into the early 1940s. Caldwell's bottles also had a cork top until about 1942 when the screw top replaced the cork top. So mine is a machine made cork top and this would have had a paper label and this side with the embossing is actually the back. I've seen lots of examples of embossing on this kind of bottle and this is one of the more fancier styles of embossing. On one of these websites I stumbled on, People were talking about their experiences with the bottles or with the product. And one person said, my mother had to hide the bottle or we kids would have drunk the whole thing. It was really very tasty. I thought that was interesting to know about the medicine since most medicines at that time were horrible tasting. And that's all I've got for today. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.